neighborhood knowing uh, it, one of the things that the advantage they have, if this was a, a genuine democratic uh, revolt and, and movement towards freedom and democracy, which, you know, by all accounts has to be considering, you know, 60 percent of the population is under 30 um, of those. 90 percent can't find work. They're unemployed. A third of the country are illiterate. It's 90 percent Muslim. Uh, the average family person is living on less than two dollars a day. I mean, so there's utter poverty. And uh, so there's a natural inclination for a better life for people. But when you add the Muslim Brotherhood and Islamic extremists that have the weapons and the guns and the means and outside influence, Iran and elsewhere, I've got to imagine that the odds are in their favor they win for the time I being. Whether, I wonder whether that is the case. I mean, we're talking about a slightly more complicated society than that. There is a, there is a substantial middle class in Egypt. You know, there's a, the, 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 there are newspapers, there are universities, there are, the, the, uh, there are institutions there that could make for a civic society. What there isn't and what there hasn't been really ever uh, in Egypt under, uh, under independence, under the, 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 the British mandate or, or under the Ottomans is uh, functioning uh, parliamentary institutions. And I, I think if, 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 we, uh, if we allowed those to develop and we gave our support to those things, um, we would quickly see Egypt becoming a much more herbivorous kind of place. The worst mistake we can make is to be on the, on the losing side of this revolution. I mean, you know, the, the, those guys in the streets, in the, all, you know, in, in Suez, in Aswan, in Cairo, they are not burning American or British flags. Their, their quarrel is not with us. It would be, I think, a, an ethical mistake to make this you, 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 Well, I, 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 you say that, but they are this ra- rampant condemnation of Israel, uh, Muslim Brotherhood saying prepare for war with Israel. Uh, anti-U.S. Uh, sentiment, which we have seen many examples of since this uprising has begun. Um, so I think, and if you look at the recent Pew poll that came out, only 17 percent of the population is is sees America, for example, in a positive light. Right, but but, hey, I, but, I, but then surprised you, if, if if America and indeed the West more widely you know, is associated with all the things they don't like about the current tyranny. I yeah, mean, it, it, no, it, it, granted, it, it, but but perception is hard to change, and you know, it, the, ultimately here, what we want is a free democratic Egypt, Jordan, Yemen, Syria, Lebanon, etc. But I, I maybe I am far more pessimistic here than you, but I just see the influence is quite strong. Unfortunately, I believe radical extremism and that thought process is far more ingrained in society than I think most people want to admit. Well, I mean, it has been when they've, as I say, when they've got the purity of opposition and, and martyrdom and, and repression. You know, your country is based around the idea that anybody is capable of living in a free democracy as long as the institutions are right. That you don't that you don't need a magical character in the people. If you get the institutions right and you have limited government, decentralization of power, you know, the separation of powers and so on, that freedom follows from that and, and freedom as a, as a habit of thought follows from free institutions. And I think that's true. Uh, just stay right there because i got to take a break. And I want to ask you because ultimately I think we share the same value system that where we got ahead in terms of where we would like to see this go. But I, I want your very specific uh, prescription and how we can actually achieve that, because that would be the ultimate outcome for me and for the world. We'll take a quick break. Daniel Hannan is with us, European member of parliament. Remember, we've got this radical extremist who supports jihad, the Muslim Brotherhood, on Hannity tonight. You don't want to miss this interview tonight at 9 on Hannity. We'll continue. Hannity Headline, a bite-sized version of the show that you can take with you anywhere you go. To sign up today for Hannity Headlines, go to Hannity.com. What is the solution uh, in Egypt? When we come back, we'll get Daniel Hannon's position on that, and you are a great American. We know you never want to miss the Sean Hannity Show. And now you never have to. Just sign up for Hannity Headlines, a bite-sized version of the show that you can take with you on your laptop, your mobile phone, everywhere you go, even to your liberal in-law's place in Vermont. So, um... Yeah. And after a few hours of that, you'll be glad you brought Sean along. To sign up today for Hannity Headlines, go to Hannity.com. We continue now with uh, Daniel Hannon, European Member of Parliament. We're talking about the situation in Egypt. Uh, I might have a more, slightly more pessimistic view than he does about the, uh, the outcome uh, of events that are still unfolding. 
Um, look, uh, but I do, we do agree. And by the way, he wrote a terrific book, The New Road to Serfdom, A Letter of Warning to America. Um, look, I, we share the same goal. I believe that natural inclination, as I said, of the human soul is to yearn for freedom. And I think the, the single best thing we could do for national security is to always encourage uh, democratic uh, movements in, in countries such as Egypt. I'm just not sure the outcome is going to be what we want in this particular case. And uh, if I am wrong, I would be extraordinarily pleased with that. Uh, but I do see the influence of, of outside groups. The Muslim Brotherhood is, is quite a, a very clear and present danger. The question is, how do we influence the outcome that we both desire? What is the best path to get there at this moment, knowing that we can't undo our support of Mubarak, et cetera? Sure. I, I mean, everyone is familiar with Churchill's aphorism about democracy being the worst system apart from all the others, right? No, nobody is claiming that this is uh, going to be problem-free. Uh, all, all options, man being fallen and our world being imperfect, are, uh, are flawed. And there are going to be problems, whatever happens now. And yeah, th some of those problems are going to be felt by neighboring countries. Some of them are going to be felt by Israel. But we're, we're dealing with realistically what is the least bad outcome. And the least bad outcome, it seems to me, is a is is full democracy. Even if you don't like the outcome of the of the first election, the cure for um, getting the wrong government has got to be in the hands of the Egyptian people themselves. You know, I, I, I think we sometimes, I think we sometimes misread the mood in in these countries. Um, very few people, as you say, the, the the yearning for freedom is is a common. Is a it's innate. Condition. Very sure. few people want to uh, grow up in a in a society where there are no more elections. It's, you know, you look in vain historically for a, for a, a country that has voted enthusiastically for the end of the right to vote. Very few people want repression. Very few people want to be forbidden by law to dress in a particular way or to made to grow a beard or whatever. Um, yeah, of course, you get some people who think that, but how, it is how, very very how? unusual to see a movement like that winning in a free, open, pluralist, multi-party system. Ma when maybe a like that does well is when it is able to persuade its country that it is the only alternative to some terrible, terrible dictatorship. And that's, that's why I say the thing, that's gonna, the, the thing that will arrest the, the rise of the... You know, let, me, let me put it another way. Where is the Muslim Brotherhood strongest? In all of the countries where, uh, where there is a dictatorship. It is weakest in the countries where there's a functioning democracy. I know, may, but maybe we're just... May, I, I think we have the same goal here, but we're not... Um, let me see if I yeah, can explain... Let me see if I can explain this better. You know, how do we then explain the history of Nazism and fascism, the rise of communism, totalitarianism, dictatorship, how do we, more recently, the Palestinians voting in a terror group, Hamas, as their leadership? You know, in other words, I agree that that inclination of, of human beings to be free is innate. I concede the point. I've, I've been stating it myself. But then how do we explain, time after time, in the last hundred years of human history, uh, that human beings have gone along with fanaticism in one shape, matter, or form, resulting in the last century over 100 million people dying? Right. It does happen, and it usually happens in some extreme circumstance, such as defeat in war, uh, uh, you know, terrible uh, economic collapse. Uh, you know, the, the, the Russian Revolution happened in a country that was fully mobilized and fighting a, a, a massive war. It, it, it didn't happen. It didn't ha arise out of a, a, a multi-party pluralist system. You know, uh, there are one or two very isolated examples of communist parties winning elections. Uh, I think it happened in Cyprus a, a couple of years ago. But it, 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 the, a communist party that's in a position to win an election, like the one in Cyprus, then is in no position to set about dismantling the whole system. And I think it's a similar thing with some of these uh, Islamic movements. I, I'm not saying that there is no problem. Look, obviously there are some young men who have been driven, in extreme cases, to, to become bombers, uh, gunmen, uh, uh, and, and terrorists. And, you know, that is, that is a worry for, for everybody. Um, that happens to some extent, of course, everywhere. You know, the, in any society, you're bound to have a proportion of deranged young people. It just, it's just a, a, a sad medical fact that you're always going to have some violence. The question is, how do you minimize it? And, uh, you know, I, it, it is not in our gift, either the U.S. or Britain, or, the, the, or any kind of international coalition, to step in and say, this is 
the outcome which we would like, and now let you Egyptians try and work towards it. I think our best bet is to say, you sort out your future, we're going to help, you know, we're, we're standing by as friends and allies, but we believe that there should be a full and free multi-party election without preconditions, and we will do our best to work in a spirit of friendship with whoever wins. All right. Well, uh, you know that, 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 that we'd, we'd, we'd at least be putting them on the path. It's not going to be an easy. Let me let me it's ask you this. Bumped, let's let's take something. a worst case scenario, and then I'll let you go. I've, I've kept you longer than I said I would. But a worst case scenario is an Iranian style regime emerges in a number of these countries. Maybe uh, Egypt, maybe Jordan, uh, maybe Yemen, and you know, obviously Syria is a terrorist state now. What, what is this a 30, 50, 60, 70, 80 year process? And, and when you add nuclear proliferation, do we have time for this this natural democratic yearning to emerge without some type of of worldwide conflict? I mean, that's what I fear. I mean, like we, I we, say, we've I been think, through two world wars. And yeah. in my mind, I think we're watching the emergence uh, potentially. And I hope I'm wrong of a third. I mean, I, I think democracy is, is an incredibly powerful thing when it gets going. I, I agree with, with uh, Natan Sharansky, who, who wrote about this. He said, you know, democracies don't go to war with each other. Democracies are peaceful neighbors. He was making an argument from an Israeli point of view uh, against the, 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 the policy of, of supporting these various strongmen. Let me put it like this, Sean. You know, what is the solution to a regime like Iran? Most of us, I suppose, I, 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 my guess is that you and I would agree on this. Most of us would say the solution... To, uh, to Iran, to this, this monstrous tyranny, these, these murderous ayatollahs who recently executed a young girl, is democratic revolution. We, we would be on the side of, you know, people in Iran taking to the streets and demanding majority rule. Now, having said that about Iran, how can we, in the name of honor or consistency, not back a similar process in Egypt? I mean, the, the, the democracy is the antidote to Islamic totalitarianism. It's not the, 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 the midwife to it. Yeah. All right, uh, Daniel Hannon, I appreciate it. This is a very complicated time, and uh, I hope in, and pray that this, uh, this concludes in a way that will be beneficial for the world. But I've got to run. Thank you so much for Jordan, being with it's us. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, my friend. And by the Thanks. way, your book is terrific, and it's a new road to serfdom, a letter of warning to, the, uh, to America. And uh, I was very pleased.